So all over all over Britain, we have ancient woodlands. Um, they are, you know, constantly under threat. They are reducing in size and quality all the time. And the reason that we really wanted to come here to start this business was because we have the Richwood Forest, the largest portion of ancient woodland left in the country. What we really wanted to do was to be able to just come here, buy whatever timber arose from this woodland as part of its natural management plan and use that to make the best quality products that we could. Uh, we cut and split the wood into sort of logs, recognisable sort of things that you'd throw into your fire. We use sort of process heat that we recover through, through our process to dry that wood um, and then it goes into kilns. And as that happens, the energy that we're putting in in heat form basically breaks the long hydrocarbons that make wood. Like wood is this gloriously complex um, <clears throat> like provision from nature, which we've used to build our environment for you know ever and a day. And on, to the hand on heart, we can't talk about the lovely effect that we're having on ancient woodlands. We can't really talk about the idea that we're sort of rebuilding these ecosystems whilst just throwing pollution into atmosphere. So we've tackled at every point that we can um, everything that comes out of this process and try to make that into a product. We started to condense the, the wood smoke. So what we do is uh, transfer the heat from wood smoke into, uh, into water. We use that water to dry the logs to go into the process, but that drops all of the vapors out of the wood smoke. Um, when we designed the kilns, we had a little five litre bucket at the back to catch this. Now it turns out we make 150 litres uh, of water-based liquid every time we put a cubic metre of wood through our kilns. Let's call it wood vinegar. Uh, it's widely known as wood vinegar, sometimes pyroligneous acid, but its largest constituent is acetic acid, uh, the same as any other vinegar. So that's why you know it gets called wood vinegar. Uh, so this is not, not about feeding plants, it's not about feeding soils, it is about uh, giving them a trigger. So it's just telling them, you know, so everything that, that gets uh, this, you know, tiny little chemical signal to tell them, now is the time. To use this, to use this in um, horticulture or agriculture, you dilute that at 200 to one. So every liter that you have is 200 liters of treatment to go on to plants or, or to land. Um, once you start to think about that, you know, suddenly actually this is not like, my goodness, this is a very useful thing to put into your own garden, on your lawn or in your vegetable patch or what have you. But actually, when you look at the impact that agriculture is currently having environmentally and think about how we wean ourselves away from the dependence on chemicals that we know we just can't keep using, this suddenly looks like a really viable alternative. We need to move into a, into a world where we are regenerating our landscapes, where we're using everything that nature has to offer us and using that to, to feed ourselves. Yeah, and it feels like we could be on the cusp, on the cusp of, uh, you know, a little revolution in the way that we think about how we interact with all of the environments around us that underpin our existence as uh, human beings on the planet. You know, don't want to get too grand. Ha <laughs> ha!